Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> My name is George Thorman. I'd like to welcome you again to an evening of local history. Uh, in the last two sessions we've had, my guest has been Donald Cousins, and I wasn't going to have him tonight. Uh, I'm going to change, but uh, we started in the last two meetings by doing Talbot Street starting at the West End. We got about as far as the Talbot Hotel on St. Catherine Street, and we decided that we'd finish the East End of the city. And Don, I'd uh, like to thank you for coming on the program, and uh, uh, I know how busy you are. Again, we're showing this set of slides from the Cameron Collection, which was amassed by Sheriff Cameron in St. Thomas and uh, is still in the city and will remain in the city. Uh, <clears throat> last uh, month when we showed the picture that we're going to show you shortly, uh, somebody phoned up and uh, knew a lot about that picture, but he didn't leave his name. And Don Cousins would like to get in touch with him. Now, Don, I think we'll start with that picture, which is on Hiawatha Street. Yeah, this is on the east side of Hiawatha, just Just a minute, we're not of, on the screen. There we are now. Are just we? north of uh, Talbot Street. And uh, the, the gentleman that phoned up during the program, or before we got home, told my wife that the place on the right was his brother-in-law's, and it belonged to Char Charlie Pierce. But he didn't say who he was, and I'd like to know. And uh, if that gentleman is watching, I wish he would phone up and, uh, and make himself known to me. Uh, it, as I said, Charles Pierce on the right, the extreme right, the large building in the middle was Thomas Trigger blacksmith shop, both blacksmiths, and Billy Batty lived in the house on the right hand side. Now this was in 1905 that this was, and Billy Batty was quite a character around town. And the next uh, slide is a picture of Billy Batty. Uh, Billy Batty was a chimney sweep, a chimney sweep, and he also sold newspapers. He did odd jobs around for people, and uh, he lived in various places besides this one here. He lived over by Hooping Cop Park, and uh, over by the gas works. Uh, Loblaws is there now. Well, you, if your child had whooping cough, you took it over and you inhaled the gas fumes, and it was supposed to be a remedy for the Now you've been arrested for selling gas fumes. Billy got in trouble one time for selling newspapers on Sunday. And he got so disgusted with the whole thing that he gave up selling newspapers. He used to sell the Sunday papers in St. Thomas, but he was breaking the Lord's Day Alliance, I guess. He was a, quite a character around St. Thomas. I believe he died around 1910. Very mm -hmm. few people would remember Billy Batty. And he had a family, but I don't believe there are any of his descendants around today. Now, just down Hiawatha Street, we're repeating a little bit from the last show, but down Hiawatha Street, this building still stands. It's an apartment building uh, today, but it was built for the, by the Church of Christ Disciples as a college. It was Sinclair College, and uh, they trained men for the ministry in this college here, and it lasted for about 15 years, I think, until about 19. Well, didn't the, uh, did the school board eventually buy that building? Uh, I don't know, but I, I believe I remember there was an overflow from some of the public schools, like Manitoba Street School, that used that building as a public school. I, I don't know whether they ever owned it. How's that changed? It doesn't quite look like that today. Is the roof line the same, or has that been changed? Well, that it's, it's pretty close to being the same, I think. Uh, that dormer at the front is gone, but I think it's, uh, mm. I think well, it's pretty Which side? Close. East or west side? of? It's on the east side of Hiawatha, side. at the corner of Owasa Street. Oh, yeah. And it's still there, very much in evidence today. Now, we're back up on the Talbot Street now, and this elegant building stood where the Capitol Theater stands today. And uh, originally it was the residence of Matthew Penhale. And in 1900 the railway men acquired it and it became the YMCA. And it did service until 1914 when the present YMCA was built. Well Matthew Penhale, that must have been one of the most palatial houses in St. Thomas. Yeah, I think it might have been. It, it, uh, it was a very elegant building and a very large building mm -hmm. and uh, very much used by the railway men. Well, uh, tell me about that railway YMCA. The YMCA in St. Thomas goes back to about 1860-something. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Anyway, yeah, but whatever. before the, before this, they just had rooms. Oh, I see. They just had uh, rooms over stores oh, yeah. and things like that. And in 1900, they uh, they bought this building, and it was quite a quite a step for them to mm -hmm. buy that. I, I I forget what they paid for. I, I think it was something in the range of of four thousand dollars, and they spent another four thousand renovating it. <laughs> wouldn't mind taking a mortgage to get a house like that for four thousand dollars, even at today's interest rate. <laughs> Fine. That was where the Capitol Theater is now. Yes. Yes. Now we're up to the corner of St. Catherine Street, uh, the northwest corner. We showed this last time. Uh, it's where Coffee's News Depot is today, and just next to that, just west of that. Now the the second store on the west was Pollen Hardware. He, uh, Frank Pollen ran that hardware store, and he went to uh, to uh, Los Angeles or San Francisco and became a millionaire over there. But it was the four. It was later taken over by McMurtry's, and uh, then Sanderson, and it's the forerunner of Sanderson's Hardware today. That was an early McMurtry store. Here. Yes, it was. And uh, Mrs. McNulty is the one who built the block. That is just the part that coffee drink, just the yes. right hand half of that picture. I believe it's Egan Brothers that were in there. Uh, Phil Egan uh, was in there at that time. Now Talbot Street isn't paved in that either, is it? Uh, no. Now this is down St. Catherine Street at the corner of Kane Street. Now the building behind the car is still standing, a grocery yes. store. It was built by Reynolds. I didn't know uh, that. I think C.J. Reynolds. Uh, uh, you can see the nameplate on that building. It's all is the it paint there? red now. But yes, it, it hasn't changed its line very much, has it? Th there's another nice old building that would be nice to have a picture of on, a, on Hiawatha Street at the corner of, uh, I forget the street. It was a store, too. It, was, it has a nameplate on it, Stover. Peter Stover built that as a store. Well, wasn't there a store in this building? Uh, there still is. Still, that still is today. Yes, yeah. I don't know. I think it's the Dixie Dairy Bar. That's right. Something like that. The building on the right is gone, and it has been gone for a, a long time. I don't ever remember it. This is a car, a streetcar, that went down by the, ho the Wabash Station oh, yeah. and came up St. Catherine Street. Went oh, down, I believe it went down Station Street and around and up St. Catherine oh. Street. Now, further down uh, to the east of the last picture, this is Herd's Mill, and it's presently uh, the uh, Day, Day family are running this. Uh, Elgin Handles. Yeah. Now listen, tell me something, <coughs> Don. The, uh, the building in the immediate foreground and <coughs> to the right is uh, the, the Herd's Mill, is it not? Or is well, it the it, building behind? It's all Herd's Mill, I believe. Well, I believe it's all Herd's Mill. Uh, no, I'm not certain of that. Then uh, uh, that was eventually taken over by the Smith family, who started Elgin Hamels. George P. Smith. Yeah. And Harvey J. ran it for a long time, and then uh, he sold it to Hap Day. Hap Day. And Hap Day's son has taken it over. And Terry. They made a very successful business out of yeah, it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very old business. Yes. In town, probably next to Erie Ironworks, the oldest industry that we have in town. I think so. I can't find uh, when herds first came in the paper, but they came about the 1870s. I think I may have that. Uh, they were they in came. Uh, They came from Lambeth, yes. Yes, and then they were down east somewhere, uh, or west somewhere, too, until they moved here. Yeah, I think I might have that date when they came here. I think one of the reasons they moved here, uh, any of those people who were making handles or wheels, was because there was um, quite a bit of hickory here. Oh, is that right? And uh, uh, that hickory was in good supply here until the... Uh, Sap suckers, until the chestnut trees died, then the sap suckers attacked the hickory trees. And now oh, yeah. all the hickory comes from uh, Georgia, I believe. Mm -hmm. They certainly had uh, good transportation facilities right beside the railway yes, there. Yes. Now we're back up to the corner of Talbot and St. Catharines. We're looking eastward down the street, and on the left, you can just see the old Arlington Hotel. It was built as the Elgin House, McNulty House, and Patrick McNulty ran it for a while, and he died, and his wife ran well, it for many years. Let's get this cleared on. This is the picture just on the left? Just on the left. You can just see a bit of it, yeah. of the McNulty House there. And on the right 
is the Dake House, the old Dake House. Right across the street from. Yeah, on the south side of the street. Uh, now, if you watch this, this uh, sleigh, the sleigh and the horses, in the next picture, that's the same sleigh going down the street, the oh, photographer. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, it was Scott that took the picture. Yeah, no, I think we said you were, we were looking east on that last picture. Yes, we were. Were we? Yes. Now we're looking south. We're looking south down Railway Street. That's right. Now Princess Ave. The Imperial Bank on the right is still standing there. Uh, not much else in that picture would so, be standing today. Well, this picture then is about 19, uh, what, 10 around then? Or? Well, maybe a little before that. I, I rather think it might be closer to 1900 that this picture. Now the building on the left was standing into the 1930s at least and there's the White Rose Canadian Oil Company oh, took over yeah. that building and it was still standing and doing service as a service station mm -hmm. in 1932. I don't remember the building myself although it could have gone up into the 40s. Oh, I don't remember it either. Well, of course mm -hmm. I wasn't here then, but uh, um, there's still a service station on that site, isn't there? Uh, no, not anymore. There was for a number. There was, yes, there was. It went oh, up until about 1950, possibly. But it, when they uh, changed uh, Princess Ave to put the Cenotaph in there, oh, yes. that's when the uh, service station disappeared. Now, this is a rather, I can't explain this too much other than to say it's a description of the explosion. Uh, in 1887, when the Michigan Central uh, and the LMPS collided and some 14 people were killed at that intersection. Uh, it's a, a watercolor painting by St. Thomas Smith. Who owns that? Uh, I believe Mr. Cameron, I believe the Cameron family mm -hmm. have that uh, little picture. It's not a very large one, it's not very elegant. And I don't know what the buildings are in the picture. Uh, all I know that it's the 1887 explosion. Well, uh, Don, in 1887, um, is this the one where a fireman was killed? Yes, uh, Bo Ponsford. Bo was it Ponsford? Or yes, it might have been Ponsford. Um, well, just where did that accident occur? Well, it was at the tracks at uh, Moore Street, uh, between Moore and uh, Railway Street. I see. Just where the tracks, the where LNPS the LNPS tracks. the is coming from Port Stanley. Where the LNPS crosses the, the Michigan, Michigan Central mm -hmm. tracks. And, uh, but, it was uh, bringing home a picnic party of school children and so on. From mostly from London. From London. Where London people, yes. A terrible explosion. I remember my aunt lived in a house on Railway Street, and she remembers getting hit with some of the oil. Oh, yeah. the, and that was quite a ways away. Well, that oil uh, uh, must have set a lot of fires. Uh, I don't know whether it did. We don't know too much about this. The, there's no pictures. No, and the newspapers are not... Uh, I have a clipping of it, but... Uh, for the time, either. But not very much. But anyway, St. Thomas Smith did this little picture. He obviously was right on the site. Uh, this is a more recent picture, and it, it's a, from a photograph by Dr. Frank Bennett, who gave St. Thomas the name the Railway City. And it's a crossing at Center Street, and showing the trees that were along there and that were taken down in 1960. Now the trees have grown up. They're almost as big as that again. There was quite a cry when they took those trees down. Yes, it turned out very well, that uh, <coughs> development, didn't it? Yes, it did. It was Primarily, Mr. Vince Berry, the mayor at the time, that uh, did it. Well, and he was Max almost Rickman was the one who suggested taking the trees down who? on Center Street. Max Rickman was an alderman at the oh, time. Oh, yeah. I think he was. Uh, uh, they almost crucified them. I know. I know they did. Yes. They it was did. a great cry. I, but I signed a petition not to take them down. <laughs> I'm really upset about it. That's a, a rather pretty picture, isn't it? Yes, it is. Quite good. I have quite a few of Dr. Bennett's slides. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't all relate to the, something like this that you can show them. But uh, he was a very energetic person around St. Thomas. This is down at the corner of Elizabeth Street and Railway Street, and it's the old Church of Christ. Uh, it was replaced by the present church in 1904. Oh, yeah. 
-huh. uh, this church was built in 1879. An earlier church had been out uh, where Centennial School is today. Yeah. And uh, the disciple movement was very strong in Elgin County, uh, east and west, and uh, a, gr a str very strong area, and it still is. Yes, they have several churches. Disciples area. But uh, this church didn't last too long, 25 years, and it outgrew itself. It was completely taken down and rebuilt by the present uh, church. Now we're back up to Talbot Street now, and this is a, a very fine picture of the old Dake House. It stood between Princess Ave on the south side of Talbot Street and the railway tracks. There you can see the railway tracks along there. And Lou Dake, as we mentioned, was the man that was up in the, the bell tower and uh, with a hammer and, uh, during the relief of Ladysmith and broke the, uh, chipped the bell. It's still evident up there. A lovely picture, this one here. Now that house, uh, there was quite a scandal about the fire in that place. Well, uh, Bob Coffey always said there was. Well, uh, what happened was, um, <clears throat> It caught on fire, and whoever phoned in the fire alarm to the fire department gave the fire department to understand somehow that the hotel was on fire out on uh, Wilson Avenue. By the tracks, the hotel by, by, by the, the tracks. The hotel by the tracks. <laughs> and uh, uh, so the fire department went out to Wilson Avenue first, and, and then they found out there wasn't a fire there, and then they came in, and by that time the fire in the day coach was so far gone that uh, they couldn't save it. And uh, the unkind people said that uh, the people who ran the day house uh, <coughs> had uh, phoned the misdirection in deliberately. Yeah, uh, but I, 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 don't <coughs> think, I don't think the Dake family owned the hotel no. at this time. I'm not no. positive. I think he was running the, yeah. the Loney House at Port Stanley. By what what the newspaper said was, like, uh, it was one of these uh, funny sort of conversations <laughs> that um, you do in an emergency. Eh? You give some instructions and, and it's capable of being misunderstood. So they had a, a, an investigation in the fire department and the city council and everybody wanting to know why the fire department went charging out to Wilson Avenue to fight the fire when it wasn't there. <laughs> and, uh, it was really very, very strange. To, uh, I, I suppose the fire department uh, still have their minutes uh, from this period. It would uh, yeah. be interesting to go and look and see what they said in their report about the fire. It wasn't any great loss uh, to the people that owned it anyway. No. Uh, prohibition had just come in and it was a fortunate thing that it caught fire. Oh, prohibition had just Pro It was during Prohibition. What that, year was that? I believe it was 1917 that it burned. 1917. Yes. Prohibition, I know it had come in when this place burned. That was one of the things that... Uh, anyway, the, the hotels were kind of elegant, weren't they, with the balcony around there? And oh, really elegant. Yeah. That was a favorite spot for parades, yes, of course, would when, be. Uh, when you'd see a parade. Of course, when Bob Coffey would tell the story, it was, it was pretty good, because <laughs> his family was always in the hotel business. Yes, they, yeah. they've been in the hotel business oh, yeah. for a long time. His father, grandfather, and Bob himself yeah. was in the hotel business. They ran the International here for a while. They ran the Loney House at Port for a while. Yes, too, and, and Bob himself ran the Talbot. Did he? Have yes, that? and his grandfather, Thomas, ran the uh, Hotel Talbot, though, oh, yeah. as early as 1890. Hmm. Uh, this is a, a real fine picture. It was about 1908 that, that this was taken. It's taken from the LMPS tracks looking west along Talbot Street. And you can see on the right hand side the uh, Arlington Hotel, uh, Egan's Grocery Store on the corner, mm -hmm. and the City Hall, and the uh, Tower of the Journal Building. And on the left hand side you can see the Dake House and a little bit of the Imperial Bank Building. Th this picture was run almost every year in the Times Journal at Christmas time. Well, make a good Christmas card, wouldn't it? Oh, it's a beautiful picture. It, it is a beautiful picture. Clear. I don't know who took this picture, but it's certainly a, a real fine. Unfortunately, the slide has broken. It doesn't show too much, but... Uh, oh, a little is. crack there. Yeah, no, it's broken. Looks like a wire now. Broken, but that doesn't hurt it that no. much. That's a pretty heavy yeah. snow, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, this is another of Dr. Bennett's 
pictures, and it shows the uh, LMPS station on the north side of the tracks, uh, just east of St. Catherine Street. Of course, it's long since gone. Uh, it's quite beautiful there. In, in place of this flower bed, Paul's Food Bar was built yeah. in the 30s and was there, I suppose, till about 15 years ago and they tore everything down. Yeah. On the right-hand side in the background, the roof that you can see there is the roof of Ponsford's uh, contractors, Ponsford Brothers. And that's about where the Canadian Legion is. That's right, right on the side of the where Legion, the yes. Canadian Legion, Yes, it is. Okay, now we're going down Moore Street, and this is the mill on uh, Moore Street, not the present mill. This one's gone, but there still is a mill there today. Well, isn't that the mill that started out as Campbell's Mill? And, yes, uh, yes. And Tan then became the Empire Mill, the Empire Flour Mills, and... Uh, 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 well, I get this mixed up with the one across from the old fire hall. Uh, I'm not sure this was Empire. Well, It was it? Campbell's, I know that. Well, I think uh, John Campbell. Uh, then he he, uh, he came in the 1890s and took the managership of it. Then he bought it out. Maybe it was called something else, and then he bought it out and called it Campbell. Yeah. Yes, it was going before he came. I think. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah. He, he came from Galter someplace as manager of it. it it's quite uh, quite interesting that it still is the site of a mill today. The Elgin and Co-op. None, uh, none of that building exists in the present Elgin Co-op. I don't know. I don't think so. I, I don't think so, although uh, it may, some of it may. I just don't know. No, I thought we're going to get off Talbot Street now for a little bit, but I thought we might go down Moore Street. No. And uh, this is at the northwest corner of uh, Moore and Wellington Street. It's the Methodist Episcopal Church that was built there in 1874, the site of the present Central United Church. And that again, the present Central United, that was taken down completely, uh, that old part. Uh, no, right? this building was enlarged in 1887 uh -huh. to this building. Oh, yeah. They added the back wing uh -huh. onto it, and uh, then this building was destroyed, and or not destroyed, but taken down, and the present church in 1897 was built. Uh, this is the interior of the, of the, the old church. of the old church, of the old Central uh, Methodist Episcopal Church. There, they used to call the minister the elder, Elder Griffith, Elder oh, yeah. so and so was the head of it. Believe it or not, I knew a woman that uh, remembered going into the first church the day it opened, and she was led. They were led by Elder Griffith who led the Sunday school class into that old church in 1874. Well, listen, what was the difference between Methodist Episcopal and the Methodist? Well, there were a lot. There was Wesleyan Methodist, yeah, Canadian Meth yeah. Methodist, there was the Methodist Episcopal, and they, they had union there. 1884 was the end of the Methodist oh, Episcopal. I see. I see. And the Methodists went together, and then in 1925, uh, the Methodist Presbyterians and Congregationalists went together. I don't know what the... Uh, the difference was in their uh, in their preaching, but I guess at that time it was significant. Now, uh, just uh, across the street and on the southeast corner is this fine residence. No, it, this is uh, on. We're going down Moore Street. Yes, you can see the Alma College in the background. Oh, yes, there. and uh, this was built by Elijah Moore, who laid out a great deal of that section of of the town. And uh, this building is still standing, and it's still very elegant. Today, it's owned by the Mathers family. Oh, yeah. For quite a long time, it was uh, known as the Ingram home. Mrs. Mathers was an Ingram. And uh, uh, Gertrude Huntley also lived in this house for a time. Now down, you can see the Alma College, and there, that's an art architect's drawing of what the Alma College was going to be. And it was pretty well like that, except for the building on the right, yeah, the chapel. No. And they never did build that chapel. I they guess did. when Timpkins uh, put the chapel in, that was uh, the modern one. In the, in the 40s, after yes. the war. Mm -hmm. 
it went in, but it didn't look like that. That looks like the libra parliamentary library. It does look like the parliamentary <laughs> right. library, doesn't the old one? Gothic style. Whose design was that? I don't know. Yeah, I uh, rather think it might be in that on that. Uh, uh, the uh, they had a competition, and I think Dara, uh, three of them were awarded uh, sort of fifty dollars for putting in a good competition. But I, I don't think uh, Dara didn't win the design. I don't know. Uh, Really something. Quite yes, a, it is. It's a very interesting quite building. A building. And I forget the cost of that building, but it was it was so small. Yeah. It was $50,000 or something like that to put that building up. Well, it's had a lot of service, hasn't it? Oh, it certainly has. hundred years. And uh, it's been kept well and kept in good condition and yeah. uh, flourishing today. Yeah. Now, this oh. is the first graduating class. I don't know any of the people in it, but I, I suppose it was about 1884, 1885. I'm not certain, but that's the first graduating class of Alma College. Well, um, that's kind of uh, interesting. Isn't it? <coughs> Everybody in white. And, yeah. Um, Dr. Warner there, who was the principal at the yeah, time. Yeah, he, he quite uh, possibly is in that picture. Somewhere. Robert Warner. Mm -hmm. This, this is another view of Alma College. This is after McLaughlin Hall had been added to the right-hand side in the 80s, I think about 1887, shortly after the college was built. Uh, McLaughlin, Archibald McLaughlin, gave the greater portion of the money to put that right wing on. And he, of course, was one of the originators of the idea of the college, too. He supported yes. it right from the start, didn't he? Yes. Alma College took its name, I believe, from Sheriff Monroe's daughter, Yes, Alma Monroe. Just why did they name it after her? He was I, one of the members of the committee. I suppose he, he may have... Well, committee a prominent the member of the committee, I suppose, and a prominent member of the community, Sheriff Monroe. It's like Grace Church was named for Grace, Grace Rosevere. Oh, yeah. It, it's quite a... You wouldn't find that today, I don't think, no. naming it after... Now this is just uh, down further, it's Myrtle Street School, yeah. down on Myrtle Street, the first Myrtle Street School, 1882. No, no, it was built in 1881. I know 81, that. 81, was it? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> um, and that's a, a Neil uh, Darrow design school. Uh, yeah. That one and... Uh, Manitoba? Scott, no, that one and Scott were built at the same time in 1881. Oh, yeah. Manitoba comes about five years later, I think. It, it was uh, taken down in 1903, and the present school was uh, erected there. My father went to this school, and also to the present school. Now we're back up to Talbot Street, and this is the John E. Smith block, and I believe you've got something to well, I, yeah, this is an interesting uh, block. It, for a long time, was Green's Furniture. That, that's the, not a good picture of it, unfortunately. That's got the uh, banners up for the 1903 centenary. <clears throat> but uh, um, when there, from the LNPS tracks to Metcalf Street, there was very, very little uh, in 1870s. And uh, there was a lot of building in this east end of town because this was Millersburg. Uh, that is west of the LNPS tracks, Millersburg, wasn't it? That was mm -hmm. the biting line. <clears throat> yes. Now this J. E. Smith, uh, who east, built the Beaver of. Block in uh, '72, built the first two parts of this Green Block, as I call it, or the Smith Block, uh, which really runs from the Elm P. S. tracks to John Street. Mm -hmm. The first two buildings on the uh, west side were built in 1871, and then in 1872 Smith built the Beaver Block of three stores, and then in 1873 and '74 they built. Uh, the four stores um, on the east side, plus the Masonic uh, Hall uh, section, which was built by the St. Thomas Reading and Literary Society. Have you ever heard of them? Oh, yes, I've heard of them. I wonder, where'd they get enough money to put up an $8,000 building? Maybe well, I, I don't know, but I, I'm sure the Masons had, uh, you see, St. David's Lodge, uh -huh. which took its name from that ward. This yeah. was St. David's Ward yes. in Millersburg. And they, John E. Smith, was a past master of St. Thomas Lodge 44. And in 1873, he joined as a charter member of St. David's Lodge. 
St. David's Lodge was all made up of not people in the city. I think John E. Smith was the only one in the city. Mm -hmm. It was made up of railroaders who had come here. Oh, I see. Quite prominent. Yeah. Uh, Square Hunt was one of them. Oh, yeah. And they were certainly instrumental in having this block built. Oh, well, that's where it come. I, the paper calls it the St. Thomas Literary Society. I'm sure the Masons... Uh, I, I think it would have been St. David's money. Lodge. Now, the only dates you can see is... Uh, on the right-hand side of this building, you still see the J.E. Smith uh, store and uh, hardware store and the date it was built, 1873. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's a, a big block in this But the, the other, the square and compasses of the Masonic is in behind the metal. Well, and also the sign of the year when it was finished. I've always been trying to find out whether it was finished in 74 or 73. Well, <coughs> I know that St. David's Lodge met first in 18, August of 1873, and this building was not completed then. No. They were meeting in a little no. tin barn yeah. down by the railway crossing until this building completed was completed, and it wasn't until 1874. That it, now, when it was started, I don't know. Well, I think it was started in 73, and... Uh, but it wasn't completed until 74. Or late uh, 74. Now that building, the, the part, uh, the tallest part of that block, uh, it's all been uh, uh, messed up now with that frontage, yes. uh, that black frontage. Uh, the tallest part of that building only cost $8,000. And each of these stores that you see in this picture, uh, each of those, the three stories, would cost about $4,000. That was the price put up a building that size. Oh, yes. Yeah. And... Uh, we might say all of this block is still the same. It's all yes. intact yes. today. Although it's changed, it is all the same thing. I remember when uh, Mr. Green put the front on that building, I met him on the street, and he was so proud of it. He yeah. said, what do you think? Isn't that really just like you had new grandson, you know? <laughs> yeah. and I just felt like crying, you know, that he covered up all those. Well, this is, a, this is a problem of uh, all sort of small cities like St. Thomas. If you look in that picture, you see blinds and curtains in the two top stories. Mm -hmm. You'd have total occupancy in a, a oh. building like that. People would be waiting and, to get uh, in. Yes. You know, you'd have uh, lawyers' offices up there and dressmakers, and some would be apartments. And you'd have quite a bit of income from a three-story mm -hmm. uh, building like that, the store down below and living quarters and uh, rental space. Now you can't rent those places. Mm -hmm. So It's just uh, storage people, up there now. Uh, they put that facing on and uh, uh, block the windows off, and they save a certain amount of wear and tear from the weather and so on. It had a nice roof line, too, didn't it? Yeah, but the, all these roof lines, uh, yeah. they, they get old and they're... Dangerous. Dangerous. George, I believe you said that you have been up in that building on the third well, uh, floor. Yeah, floor. Mr. Green uh, went up one day and uh, I went up to see if I could find any Masonic wallpaper. You said you thought Yes, he told Masonic me. He wallpaper. was the one that told me that. Well, I, I couldn't find any. He let me run I, around. Now, I don't say Masonic wallpaper, but signs that there had been a lodge. Oh, well, there. a little platform thing, maybe. Yes, that might be there. You see, that was used as a lodge well into this century. The Chosen Friends. My father remembers being up there in lawn bowl, uh, carpet bowling oh, yeah. up there with the Chosen Friends. They used that as a lodge room. <laughs> oh, uh, as late as 1920, probably. But Mr. Green always told me that there were was still the signs of a lodge. Well, if anybody's got a picture of the Masonic Temple part that you can see the uh, a date of the erection on it. I'd like to see a copy it, of It's that. too bad that we, Mr. Green, I'm sure, uh, Al Green was a fine man, and I'm sure if we had told him to go around that yep. with the metal that he would have done it no matter oh, yes. what. Yes. Yep. But uh, we just didn't do it in time, but no. I'm pretty sure he would have done it. And then it blew off in the storm a couple yes, of years I know, ago. I know we that. had another opportunity and didn't take the opportunity. No, but you couldn't see it. Uh, uh, I tried to, I took a picture. You could see it, but it was, it was... Uh, you can't, you can see that it's one and eight and the seven line, but you can't say whether it's three or four for the other part. You should have got a ladder and gone up yeah. to it. <laughs> This, this, by the way, is the Ingram and Davy hardware store. Mm -hmm. They had two hardware stores, one at the west end and one at the east, and this was their east end store. Oh, yeah. Both these buildings, and they were a hardware, that was a hardware store in there until after the war. Sanderson's hardware were in that, uh, that block, and then they moved across the street to the uh, building that they're oh, in yeah. at the present time. Well, was that the Ingram who <coughs> became a member of parliament, or was it his brother? The Ingram who ran the I don't believe it was either. I don't believe it was either. I don't believe it was either one. 
They were both Andrew, I believe, but one was A.B., the member, and I don't believe they were of the same family. I'm not positive of that. Now, uh, this is Lemon's Drugstore, the interior of Lemon's Drugstore, and I believe that's Mr. Frank Lemon on the left-hand side there. This was when Lemon's Drugstore was in part of the Girard. Where Girard's is now, and the then Girard's. they moved to the corner. And then, the later. yes, and that's right. This was in the Beaver block. <coughs> and Mr. Lemon started that when, 1901 or 1899? Yeah, one, I think. He took over from R.J. Olds. Oh, yeah who had been in there prior to that. This Why is, that looks like a long store, the perspective. Uh, yeah, I, as I remember Lemon's Drugstore, not this one, but the other one, it yeah. certainly wasn't that long. No, but it would, that's a perspective that fools you in the picture, but that's a very fine photograph, isn't it? Oh, it, it is, very. Uh, so many uh, drugstores, I think we have three drugstores in town today, dispensing uh, uh, prescriptions. And, and back then, I suppose there'd be 12, 13, oh, yes. something yes. like that. And something else, drugstores, they usually had a soda fountain, a yeah. small soda fountain. Well, Lemons did too, didn't Oh, they? yes, Lemons did. Yeah. I think, I think most of the Liggetts had a very prominent uh, soda fountain in theirs. Now, this is down at the corner of uh, Ross Street looking west along Talbot Street. You can see the, the large building on the right is the Wilcox House, the Empire Hotel of today. Wait a uh, minute, now you're looking west? West. From Ross Street? From Ross Street. West on Talbot? Yeah, yeah. Almost all of the when buildings... When you said on the right, you mean on the left? Oh, I mean on the left, yes. Uh, the I'm building sure. on the left is the Wilcox House. Yes, it is. Almost all the buildings you can see there are still standing Yes, today. they are. Mm -hmm. This would be taken around 1900, mm -hmm. thereabouts. Uh, the well, now, didn't the Wilcox house at one time was on the north side of Talbot? No, there were two. Uh, there were another. Th Wilcox. There were actually three Wilcox ho hotels in Wilcox. town. Yeah. There was this one, Jacob Wilcox, and there was George Wilcox ran the Dominion House where the Brunswick is, and there was another Wilcox house across from the YMCA, oh, no. somewhere yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. But now this is the same. The same uh, location, it's in 1903 that this one was taken. You can see the brick pavement there quite oh, well. Yes. This was at the time of the Talbot Centennial. It's not a very good picture. I don't know as I've ever shown it before. You can see the streetcar there, quite prominent. Now this is at the YMCA, the Cornerstone Lane, in May 1914. Was that the what, the Duke of Connaught? The Duke of Connaught, yes. Son of Queen Victoria. And he brought with him Pin Princess Patricia uh, when they laid that. And the mayor, the, the duke is with the top hat right of the center of the picture. And to his, uh, to our right, is uh, Angus Johnson, who was the, the mayor. You know, yes, it's M Marshall Johnson, yeah. M.B. Johnson, who was the mayor at that time. And that Princess Patricia, can you see her in there? Uh, I can't see her. No. She's one that, that the Princess Patricia Regiment was yes, after. Yes, yes. She was as popular as the Duke of Connaught, I think, that day. What? She was as popular as the Duke of Connaught that day when they came to St. Thomas. Of course, many people can still remember that uh, cornerstone lane in 1914. If you go up and look, it's still standing there. Uh, this is our uh, station, still uh, there, minus the uh, chimneys on top. And the canopy around it. Yeah, now that was. <coughs> uh, I've always thought that was one of the most elegant buildings in St. Thomas. Yeah, it still is even today isn't it? for a long, narrow uh, uh, building. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice if we could retain that and put some use to it, or put it to some use. It's yes. uh, it's, it's a shame if that. Well, the railway use a lot of it. They have yeah, but they don't use that. nearly. No, there's they don't use a quarter of it. I don't suppose. One of the things about that Canada Southern Railway that, you know, was built here in 1872 and 73, <clears throat> all the buildings they put up, the shops and the uh, warehouses, are all elegant buildings. Mm -hmm. They're uh, with nicely designed and uh, very solidly built, and uh, uh, it's a shame that, uh, to see them go. That had a beautiful dining room in it, this yes, end of that building. Yes. That was famous dining room. Wasn't Going it? 24 hours a day. Yeah, the trains uh, from Detroit and from New York stopped there. And the 
people get a meal at the station, wouldn't they? I think how many <coughs> trains go through a day now? One or two? <laughs> Not well, I, I don't think there are any passenger trains anymore. No, I don't think so. And nothing but freight trains now. But there was, at that time, uh, there must be uh, perhaps six or seven passenger trains each way. A day? Yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd say there'd be uh, 15 to 20. In yeah, this is 1900s. Yeah. I'm up to... Uh, yeah. I think they hit their peak maybe about 1910. Yeah. And then they've gone down. This board fence is long gone mm -hmm. in between the tracks, the eastbound, westbound tracks. Now, this is a picture of the... In 1893, uh, this went through. It's the DeWitt Clinton, and it was the first uh, railway train in North America. And they had put it on flat cars, and they were taking it to the Columbian Exposition in Chicago, oh, yeah. the World's Fair. And it went through St. Thomas, and they stopped, and the people of St. Thomas had an opportunity mm -hmm. to go out and see this train. It's still around someplace in New York State, some museum. And this is the 999 Empire State Express. Real <laughs> famous What engine. year is that one? I don't know what year that is. But there's certainly people around that could tell you. Yeah. Uh, this is another view. Now this is looking uh, west from the, from the station. And in the background you can see that high building is the mill on Moore Street. And just in front of that, you can just see the peak of some buildings, and they were called the Terrace, and they were on the north side of Center Street. And, the, and I wouldn't say tramps, but uh, it wasn't the best of people that lived in those buildings. There were different uh, lower-class families that uh, lived right beside the tracks in the Terrace, that it was called, long gone. That picture was taken, I know, by John... Jackson, oh, who yeah. left here and went out to Vancouver, where he ended his days. Well, was he a photographer? Uh, an amateur photographer. An amateur photographer. He took a lot of very fine pictures, though, in St. Now, Thomas. I have a little trouble making this one out, Don. Uh, well, this is from Ross Street, and it's looking eastward, just opposite to the last one. You can see the depot with the chimneys on it, and uh, you can see the coal dock on the right, and beyond that, the water tower. It's really quite a comprehensive... Uh, photograph about 1910, possibly the busiest time that the railway had. Uh, beyond the depot, you can see another building, the freight shed, which is still standing. Yes. And there's another picture of that uh, coming. There's the freight shed there. And that building is still standing and still being used by the railway. I believe I have the name of some of the uh -oh. people in that last picture. This is the 91st Battalion the day, June the 26th, when they went to... Uh... This is a, an interesting picture because uh, one night uh, I had Brian Sims on. We were doing military history of Elgin County. And I, uh, isn't that a picture that shows uh, someone holding a, a baby up? I believe it is, yes. Uh, to be embraced by the father who's ever in there. Well, the woman who was that baby phoned up. No. And, uh, yeah, and identified herself. And is I had right? written down the slip of paper somewhere and lost it. Th but, this, uh, by the way, is just taken from a newspaper clipping. This isn't from a photograph. Well, the photograph's much clearer. Yes, it would and, be. Uh, I don't have the original no, of this one. This is from a newspaper. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, the original one, Brian Sim has a copy of the original one. And, uh, it's quite a picture. The biggest yeah. crowd, apparently, that was ever in St. Thomas was on that yeah. day. You can see the coal dock in the background there. Mm. On to Berlin. And this was the last church parade. The Reverend McGilvery, I believe it was. Uh, the last church parade in front of the station in the background there. And this is Talbot Street. Well, why the did, they have the, did they have the service in the open here? Or? Yes, right in the open on the grounds there. Uh, the, where the park was. Where the park was, the no, New York Central Park. Is. That's right, the AMP parking lot is right in that location mm -hmm. today. Look at those cars. I didn't realize there were that many cars in St. Thomas in uh, that time. Oh, I think in 1916 there would have been quite a few cars. That's when the 91st went, 1916. Yeah, yeah. I, I think quite a few cars are in St. Thomas. My grandfather had his first in 1914. Yeah. I think there would have been quite a few at that time. Now this is a, I didn't do any research on this, but it's the Featherstone 
company that oh. was down the Featherstone, Featherstone company. Yeah. Now I believe they. I'm not just sure. I believe they made carp, uh, corset stays in there, and I do know it was down located now. One of these buildings was still standing until the last 10 years, but it's down now. Where was it? In behind the market. In behind the market. Horton Street Market. Horton Street Market, yes. And uh, Frank Brinkman, who became very prominent in uh, political life of St. Thomas, became a mayor and was an alderman for many years and uh, prominent in the labor uh, council here. He came from Michigan with the Featherbone Company. And uh, didn't stay with it. It it collapsed in the late 1880s. Well, did they make corsets completely, or you say they just made the stays? I think corsets? they just made the stays. I see. That was one of the things they made. I know. I, I don't think they made the complete corset. Seems a strange thing to have a company making uh, making those and being known for that. Well, those stays were little strips of metal. Yes. Uh, a very pliable uh, metal. That yeah. They made them. Now this is Manitoba Street School, down at the end of Manitoba Street. It came down uh, what, about 10 years ago, yeah. maybe a little longer than that. And uh, it's a vacant lot down there now, kind of a park, I suppose. Now what year was this built? 1885, George? I think, Manitoba 85. Street was built. Yeah. It was, never any, it was never any bigger than this. No. This no. was the size of it when they took it no. down. It was one of those schools that... Uh, uh, wasn't enlarged. All the others well, were sort of enlarged. halfway between uh, Scott and uh, Balaclava. Balaclava, and then they enlarged Balaclava in 1898, and uh, they enlarged Scott too. And uh, so this just sort of took an overflow for the lower grades for a long time. I, I kind <clears> of <throat> think that it was from this, from Manitoba Street School, that they used the Sinclair College. The overflow from this, from maybe, Manitoba maybe. Street, mm -hmm. went to Sinclair College on uh, Hiawatha yeah. Street. This is over on uh, Balaclava Street, and it's the uh, Grace United Church, Grace Methodist Church. It was a Wesleyan Methodist, the same as uh, uh, First United, First Methodist yeah. Church. This church is the one that was named for Grace Rosevere? Rosevere, yes. Mm -hmm. Matthew Rosevere's daughter. He was the prime mover I in see. this church. And it, too, was enlarged in... Uh, the 1880s. And but any of the re old church? No, no, I don't think so. I think it was all taken down and a completely new church was built on the site. A Grace Church, I just forget when it uh, was rebuilt. Well, it has a, uh, uh, it's a very nice church to this day, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Inside oh, yes, of it is. It is. Uh, <coughs> that's Peter Lang's church. No, no. No, no, Peter Lang's is Alma Street, Presbyterian. Oh, that's right, Alma, Presbyterian, yeah. yeah. No, I'm getting them mixed it's up. It's almost Peter Lang's church, too. He's been in there so yes. long. Yes. Yeah. This is Tom Curra's church, oh. Grace Church. Now, across the street from that church was St. John's Episcopal Oh, that's the first St. John's. Yes, and it was built the same year that uh, Grace Church was built, oh, yeah. 1873. See, right after the railways came, all the churches started to, the city grew, and uh, with it, the churches had to Well, come. all that part north of the uh, the station uh, grew with the uh, people who worked uh, for the railroad. Right? Yes. Uh, yeah. That would account, I hadn't thought of that before, but that's true. It's why all those small churches were built, isn't it? Yes. They, uh, now, this church moved to the, the site of the present St. St. John's. They didn't move the church. They just rebuilt the church yeah. because the people in the south end of town couldn't complain that they had to go down to Ross Street and back down here. Oh, yeah. So they moved it to St. John Street to make it convenient for the people in the south end of town. They were breaking away, actually. There were people that were living over in Irish Town on Elm Street that were going to this church, and they were gradually going to churches closer to them. But See, this is an interesting thing. From Ross Street to uh, First Avenue, eh? There's no north-south street right. crossing the uh, railroad tracks. And, right. uh, we just sort of accept it now. What you're saying is that the people went to that church, if they lived on uh, Wellington, had to go along Wellington to Ross and come up Ross and then go along Talbot to get to this church. That's right. And they had a big problem with the school children. Sometimes they divided the school boundaries, and some of the children used to walk all the way across from... Uh, 
Wellington Street across the railway tracks to go to Balaclava. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one time, the parents were uh, wanted a bridge built all the way across the railway tracks and the yards there uh, uh, to make accommodation for people uh, wanting to move north and south. Mm -hmm. That's the big tragedy of St. Thomas. There are no north-south roads that go yeah. right through. Eh? You know.